Hello everyone and welcome to the yes, September Cohortion 2v2 tournament. That's yeah. September Cohortion 2v2 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, and we have matches. So it's gonna be a bit of a smaller tournament today. There's only five teams that have signed up. Ample and Drop are together, Aster and Kingstad. They're fighting off first, but the first game we're gonna cast is Pyrostasis Rar versus Wesleyan 400. And then Hokomoko and Anarchy just waiting for the results of round one. So we haven't done a 2v2 tournament in a while, and this will be interesting because a lot of these teams have been formed basically out of people who just signed up. And that's... that's one of those things that happens fairly often. It's not unusual, but it is something that does happen, and as a result, like... It's one of those things that happens, and as a result, you get people who have, like, they have teammates that aren't, like, as coordinated. So, it'll be interesting to see how people manage to work it out, essentially, on the fly. But, I'm wondering what we're going to see for the first match, because it's going to be Rar and Pyrostasis versus the, was it, Wesleyan, Wesleyan 400. And we saw 400 actually... Wesleyan 400 were together in the previous tournament. They're actually one of the two teams, along with Hokomoko and Anarchid, that are dedicated teams. Like, those will be the teams to beat, because they actually planned to be together, they wanted to be together, and as we saw in the 3v3 tournament, Wesleyan 400, if I recall correctly, were together as well, and they did a really good job. So, they are the team to beat. Watch how they, watch how they work, figure out, see what they do, Pyrostasis and Roar are going to be up against a bit of competition right early on. But, still waiting on them to actually get in here. I believe we're going to be starting on Ravaged. I don't know for sure because there's a bit, there's been a bit of a change in format. It was planned to be Swiss. Now it's going to be double elimination. And the main post has not been updated for that. So, my, to the best of my knowledge, we are going to be playing on Ravaged. But that is subject to change, especially since the teams are allowed to actually change it themselves. They wish they can just say, okay, no, we actually want to play on some other map. We want to play on Rapids, or we want to play on Icy Shell. I don't know why I'd want to play on either of those maps, but there are two maps that are in the pool. So, at this point, I'm kind of curious what we'll see. Because tanks... Tanks got nerfed recently, and they were, I believe, not really super relevant in the Renegade tournament last month, but they had just stopped being relevant. So I think what'll happen is that they'll actually end up being, well, less relevant. I mean, at this point, there's been a more of an adjustment. People have been able to practice with the new Cyclops and figure out how it works and where it can't work and where it can work, and that's useful for actually understanding how the game is going to progress. But I'm curious how that's actually going to play out because, well, I don't know how much... I haven't seen a lot of the practice for these players. I mean, they, I'm sure, have been practicing, but I don't know if they've been doing it that much. So I'm curious how it's going to go. <sighs> anyway, with... Once I get sorted out, then we can actually get this going. Are we on Trojan Hills? Okay, well, at any rate... 400 and Wesley... Where's Wesley? Get over here. Okay, there, never mind. We are actually on Trojan Hills! Hooray! My favorite. Not entirely sure why, but it is my favorite map. At any rate, we... Should... Should hopefully get started pretty soon, then. Players are in, the map's chosen. And... Everyone seems to be ready. See how this plays out? Hmm. But you don't have my stream link? What? Hmm. 
Okay, well, can we go? Okay, well, we'll get into the game soon enough. Like I said, for Wesley, I'm thinking, let's see, last time, I mean, the 3v3 tournament, they were playing a lot of, like, well, okay, tank leg cover kind of thing was the thing that came up a few times, but, I don't know, tanks were, tanks were a common thing for them. I think we're probably going to see tanks in air, but I'm not entirely sure, because, of course, that's, that's a map dependent thing. And on Trojan Hills, I'd kind of expect something more to do with, say, cloaky bots. That seems more likely to me. But, I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, it's one of those things that I think it could be cloakies. It could be something else. It could be cloaky light vehicle. I mean, it could be spiders, actually, but I kind of doubt that. It's not like they wouldn't necessarily use spiders. It's just that I don't necessarily expect it on this map with a 2v2. In 1v1, it's not super uncommon in 2v2 it feels like it'd be kind of difficult to pull off but we are gonna see it anyway in fact pyrostasis going for the spiders no one on no one on the north team yet set up for that yeah so we actually are gonna see spiders interesting which is not a bad choice this map it's a little bit difficult for spiders to get around because of these giant ravines but they can get around this. It's not. It's not like there's water in the way. The Bandit Plains, which is essentially the larger version of Trojan Hills, does have water in the ravines, and that does prevent spiders from just moving around arbitrarily. But not Trojan Hills. Trojan Hills is dry. Like completely dry. There's actually not even water on the edge of the map, surprisingly. Just no water whatsoever. Rar, however, is going for tanks. So Rar and Parostasis have their stuff sorted out, I think. Oh. Spider Shield is apparently what 400 West are, well, what West is considering. So I was right about the spider thing. A little bit too on, a little too on about the cloaky idea. But yeah, spider would work. We even see West planning out like how they're going to just go and take that little plateau there. And Pyrostase is likely to do the same thing since their spider factory is set up to do exactly that. And then shields in the back. Yeah, that's exactly what's being done. So I'm curious how this is going to work with RAR and the tanks, because Trojan Hills is a map that's kind of flat, kind of supports tanks, but there still are a lot of ramps, and there's not a huge amount of open space. So, so I'm not entirely sure how that's going to play out. But we will see. I mean, RAR is going to show us exactly what they have planned for tanks. While at the same time, Pyrostasis, there's those fleas going up with 400 of the fleas as well, going and scouting around the northern, or the eastern plateau, and... Shields from Wesley, setting up some bandits for what looks like, not so much early raiding, but early scouting. Just to, yeah, just to have a little idea of what's going on. So everyone trying to set up their scouting forces. It looks like we're going to actually have a slight problem for 400 there. No, okay, okay, 400 and 400 pirate stasis know that the other is going for the Spiderbot factory, but they don't necessarily know much else. There's our first scouting fleet. Ooh, actually, wow, pirate stasis is being very aggressive. Managing to get a free metal extractor right off the bat, too. I mean, right back up to deal with that ultimately, but 400 now having to rebuild a metal extractor, so good early rating coming in from what, from Pyrostasis. Like, that's actually kind of, that's quite surprising. The fact that it worked out is honestly not normal. Like, normally a flea coming in there, that's not going to be that e not going to have an easy time getting rid of the metal extractor. Granted, it only took away about, I don't know, 100 metal or so, but still, that's value. If you consider that just how long that metal extractor was out of commission... And the fact that the rebuild happened, like, it was not entirely worthless. Especially for a cheap flea. Like, that's the thing. For any other unit, that wouldn't have been that great. But for a 20 metal flea? Yeah. That worked. That did its job. At the same time, what, 400 making sure that they're not going to be completely sidetracked by, or sideswiped by that again. 
Last thing they wanted to lose a bunch of stuff to fleas coming in from the other side. And, oh, Rar with the Kodachi forced to retreat with that Kodachi, and I don't think the Kodachi is going to take much damage, but it is not going to be able to help in the fight. It's... And similar thing happened to the other one. These these bandits are very good choice just for getting rid of the Kodachis without taking too much damage of their own. They did go down, and unfortunately the Kodachi did not die. But it is not in the best of positions either. Uh, the Kodachi from the front being distracted by a flea. We might... Are we going to see another flea going for the distraction? It looks like no. It looks like instead we're going to have a red back coming in here to help the bandit. And that's fine. The Kodachi is forced to retreat and... Are they going to... Are they going to keep trying to retreat? Yes, they are. Okay, so at this point... At this point, Western 400 have managed to establish the north side. South side also being established reasonably well, but it's... A little more insular. Actually, I know I say that, and yeah, no, there's there's expansion over the east western side of the map. What I mean more is that 400 is putting a lot of pressure in the center of the map and pretty much taking the entire center. And the Redbacks doing a really nice job getting rid of basically anything that comes near them. 400 losing one of them, but Pyrostase is losing basically everything they built up except for the Weaver, which is a bit of a shame. Having not gotten rid of the Weaver, it's going to be harder for Western 400 to be able to completely tear apart their opponents, but probably not too hard overall. We're still in a position where 400 and Wesley should be able to apply pressure in the center of the map. And from there, they are expanding a bit. Redback's coming in all on the sides, though, will make that expansion somewhat riskier. And I'm honestly kind of surprised Wesley hasn't been building any static defenses right now. Just with all the Redbacks coming in, it's something I would kind of expected. But no, looks like most of Wesley, Wesley and 400's focus is all in the center. And 400, they are building static defenses. They are a bit more concerned about whether or not they're going to be hit by spiders on all sides. But that's just them. However, Wesley, more focused on the aggression, deciding the best defense is a good offense, going into the bandits, getting rid of a few metal extractors, possibly be able to get rid of all them in the main base. But no, they're more concerned about the plateau, which unfortunately for them has not been claimed at all by Pyrostasis. So this move is a bit of a waste. Going to lose most of their bandits in the process to the Redback. Unfortunately, they're not really able to win. I mean, Redback's... Pretty well counter bandits. Higher, like, high frequency attack, high damage attack, hits at a longer range. Yeah, it's, it is meant, it's a riot unit. It's meant to counter raiders, and that's exactly what it's doing. At the same time, though, 400 setting up quite the wall over on the eastern plateau. So at least they've got that protected. They do have that claimed. But it's kind of unfortunate for Wesley they did just go to the plateau. Rather, If they wanted the main base, they would have gotten a lot more damage done. Still, two metal extractors isn't nothing, and that does put the South team behind somewhat. They're, although, more importantly, behind in terms of the lack of production capacity. No caretakers on their factories, so they're actually just accessing like mad. Same time, the North team, they're able to produce plenty. They have caretakers on their factories. They have a bunch of static defenses being built up. That the, well, the Weaver or caretaker on the factories. So they have a lot of things using their metal, and it's... It is definitely an advantage to the Northern team, because, you know, more stuff means more ability to affect the map. But I don't know if we're going to see all that really come through. Because, I mean, I say that, but at the same time, territory is in favor of the South team. If the South team is able to use that and actually build up from there, especially build up the eastern, the western plateau, then I could see... I could see them managing to pull through. Especially since they are getting a lot of reclaim off this, but it's just... They aren't using it to actually build anything. It's always going to excess. The main advantage here, of course, being the fact that welders are able to just power through everything, building static defenses everywhere and making it impossible for 400 to actually hold this with static defenses. Because, hey, forward stinger, why not? It did the trick. However, this is where the economy advantage to the north side is going to be coming in. Wesley coming with a shield ball. A small shield ball, too. It should be... It's growing. Not should be growing. It is growing. There's loads of thugs streaming in at the same time. And, of course, being a shield ball... That's a bit more room to get past some of the damage coming in from a distance. And that being said, it's not like Recklesses are a bad choice against shields, but... The thugs... They can come in, and they are protecting some Recklesses of Wes... Of, well... 400s, which were transferred to Wesley. So, that's still gonna be an advantage for the north side! Those shields doing a great job just making sure that basically... All the advantage goes to the northern side. All the Recklesses under the shields taking no damage... While wiping out Pyrostasis' army. The main challenge here is holding on to the Eastern Plateau and possibly taking down the Western Plateau. 
And West Plateau being a target, whether or not it's actually going to be destroyed remains to be seen. Some forces over here apparently forgetting that only spiders can go through the ravines, but yeah, forces over here trying to set this up. I almost expect if terraforming would happen here, and actually, that'd be interesting if that happened, but I don't know. I would kind of like to see that, but I kind of doubt it'll happen. At any rate, the the overall fight is definitely in favor of the northern team. Oh, and the welders. If they get rid of the welders, that is going to be huge. I don't think they're going to go for it. Just all the stingers in there. That could actually be the death of the shield ball. Three stingers with not a whole lot countering them. I don't see this working out in favor of the northern team, but hey, the outlaws apparently disagree with me. Slowing everything down and trying to make sure this that not much happens to the shield ball, it's kind of hard to say. Stingers are being slowed down, but at the same time, all of the recluses were killed. All but one of the recluses were killed, I should say. One of them is left, which is actually a bit of a big deal, but the thing is, all these shields are drained. There are basically no shields left. Still, it broke some of the siege on the eastern plateau, and that could be enough making it a bit easier for 400 to get around the side with their recluses and just tear apart Rar's base in the back line. Not sure how well that's necessarily going to work, though, just because... Actually, no, I do know how well this is going to work. The northern team has had an economic advantage for so long that it's clear they're going to be... Well, they have the advantage. I mean, those that siege in the eastern plateau was the biggest threat that the southern team could bring. And with the western plateau going down as well, the southern team doesn't really have a whole lot in the way of any real beachhead. They don't know where they can really set up. Pyrostasis is about to lose their commander as well. And they cannot escape. This commander is stuck. Not a recon. If that was a recon com, they could have jumped over and been fine. But it's not. So with that, South team losing a fair amount of their economies. I mean, they're been behind economically most of this game. They were accessing a lot earlier as well. And that's just... That's just a problem. At the same time, though, the Sherman Rex is coming in here uncontested by any anything really it would be nice if weren't the fact that rar is being attacked in the back lines they do have a cyclops being built up but i don't see this being built up in time actually no well uh, the heck oh that's what's going on yeah they do have one cyclops though and that's actually fairly effective slow does deal a huge amount of damage to shields so that's a great way of getting through dealing some damage hitting Getting rid of part of the shields, or in this case, just dealing enough straight damage, because a thousand damage each, that it doesn't even matter. The shields can't even block it. Okay. Cyclops it is. Apparently Cyclops is still a thing. I mean, it doesn't have the slow beam anymore. If it had the slow beam, then that would be far more effective. As it is, only the Cyclops could actually penetrate the shields, just because of the way the shields work. But if it was old Cyclops, that would have been the entire shields gone. So fair enough, the Cyclops nerf did do something. But, yeah, the question is, what is North Team's response? Because they have the economic advantage. They are going for air, so there's the response. Get a bunch of ravens. Bomb the Cyclops. I mean, it's an idea. Not... Not thinking it's a bad idea. But it's only part of the idea. Like, there needs to be a bit more of a considered effort to actually get rid of the ground forces, especially all the recluses here. And that is something the ravens can do. I think the ravens are going to be focusing mostly on getting rid of the Cyclops first. But, I honestly don't know. I mean, the Cyclops almost seems like it's not as big of a threat just because, hey, you've got Stingers. You can Stinger it to death. you got Recluses. There's actually a pretty decent amount of forces here to deal with the Cyclops. Or to make it have a really difficult time getting into the base. So, no, I'd say use the Ravens to get rid of the Recluses, but apparently, apparently the Cyclops is the target as thugs go in and attack the Pyrostasis base. Not to much effect, mind you. Being Stardust and Ferret is the thugs can't really get in, but that's honestly kind of fine. So much focus on anti-ground that anti-air is going to have, or air is going to have an easy time getting in here. Cyclops is going to go down, and with that, I think we should be able to see a bit of a focus on getting rid of, well, okay, get rid of some economy when you can, but getting rid of this defensive line. Possibly getting rid of a couple caretakers. I mean, if they just get, if North Team just get rid of the production and keep applying pressure, they should be fine. These Recluses are the main asset that the South team has. If they lose those, they're done. And they're going quite forward, so honestly, the Ravens could just go in and kill them. The only thing I'd like to see West build right now is an air pad if they're going to focus on this kind of strategy. But otherwise, this is a good position for the Northern team. 
As long as they can actually get rid of this. The razors are going to cause problems. This is kind of what I was saying that it's a better idea to not do this. Why is the Raven going back lines? This is the... Okay, I guess they don't know this is the key thing. But the Recluses are the key thing right now. And ground forces are not getting rid of them. That's sort of my point. So, getting Phoenixes... Or... Uh, there they are. Getting the Phoenixes. Already. On the ball about that one. Get a couple of Phoenixes. Burn out the Recluses. And that should work. I mean, Ravens would still be a good idea. But, like, Ravens, if you spread across, if you spread fire, so you hit all of them. I can't remember what the key combination to do that is. But I think it's like alt, alt attack or something. And you draw a circle and then individually target. Doesn't really matter, though. The Phoenixes should do the job. Getting rid of all the... Oh, actually, half the Recluses? Some of the Recluses? Not many. This is why I kind of wanted to see the Ravens do this earlier, because that's where the problem lies. The Recluses coming in here, not being able to do much. Although, Fleas... Ooh, actually, very clever. Fleas against Stinger. That's a... That's a great idea. Except for the, you know, the Stinger death explosion, which I think... No, the Fleas might have been able to avoid if they had just tried to. If they had gone out and retargeted, they would have been able to avoid it, but... Eh, still, Fleas versus Recluses is... Sort of an option. Unfortunately, the way the Recluse shot fires, it has a bit of a riot effect. Like, it fires in a way that the fleas can't easily dodge it. So, yeah, despite their size, despite their skirmishers, the fleas don't have an easy time getting in. Almost acts like riot units. And at this point, I don't know. I mean, at the same time, though, 400 has been destroying the entire back line this entire time. As much as Pyrostasis has been trying their desperate best to keep things alive, RAR was undermined from behind, and that is going to be Wesleyan 400 winning this match, and I believe they're going to be moving on. And, yeah, actually, if we look back at the brackets, too, we see that Wesleyan 400 have beaten Pyrostasis and RAR, who will be fighting Ample and Droppy in the lower brackets, while Hokomoko and Anarchid are going to be up against Astran and Kingstad. So I'm curious how that's going to go. Let's check that out. I might have already started. If it's already started, then I'll just switch over to that. Otherwise, I will see what's going on here. What? What battles do we have? We have tournament games. No tournament games for this? Ah, here we are. Okay, so we're going to have another Trojan Hills match. This time it's going to be Astran and Kingstad versus Anarchid and Hokomoko. Still in the... Still in the winter semifinals. So we saw there, like, Wesleyan 400, like I said, they were more coordinated, or I figured they'd be more coordinated. So that kind of makes sense. And, actually, I just realized... Oh, I made a mistake I usually do. One second, I'm going to be back in a second once I get the streaming right. I, I'm not in tournament mode. People might have actually been stream sniping. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Got it sorted out again. My bad. Sorry about that. It'll be a couple minutes before it gets back up. But once it is, we will have a fair setup. It won't be just me. Well, it will kind of be me speaking in the void, but it won't just be that. But it also won't be a situation where people can actually just look at the stream and see what's going on. I don't think anyone was. I didn't notice the way people were playing that it looked like they were actually using the stream for information they couldn't otherwise gather. But, it, it's always a good practice. I just kind of wish I had done that. Alright, so yeah, we have the... Oops. What the heck? Eh. Hmm. Anyway, back to the match. And we have... Oh, okay, Anarchid going cloaky. What do we have here? Okay, Anarchid wants to go cloaky. There with Hokomoko. And this is the other coordinator team. Anarchid Hokomoko, the other team that signed up as a team. Astra and Kingstead were signed up later. So Hokomoko going for the spiders. Anarchid look like they're going to go for cloakies. Here's how that's going to go. I'm actually kind of not... I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that spiders have become... A more popular map. I mean, okay, this is a map that works well for spiders. I just never really expected spiders to work well in 2v2. I mean, I, I, I've i seen it a few times, but it's not something that... I guess in 2v2 I wasn't sure. In 3v3 it makes sense. You have a player that can kind of come in and 
they can do stuff and as if you have a spider player but you have two other players that are in factories that have a stronger raider then you're fine but then again if you're playing 2v2 then you still have that i mean you still have a character that has a stronger raider and that that still does the trick like you still have a cloaky bot factory you still have a tank factory or like a tank factory raider is a little bit all or nothing but still you have stronger raiders to work with so it's fine also king's head going for cloaky as well so this is kind of more what i expected from the last game like cloaky bots on trojan hills is very normal i was actually surprised we didn't see any last time this is what i expect though spider cloaky is an interesting combination and it's clear that anarch is using it for the cloakiness going for early size letting hokomoku deal with the raiding and scouting and all that and instead trying to go for sneaky options themselves or are they doing the scouting thing oh are they doing the scouting thing oh i haven't seen anarch do this in forever usually he'd use a gremlin for this but they might be trying to go into the back lines with this and use that for extra scouting on top of the fleas that'd be pretty cool i was like time was okay not so much time was it's one of those strategies that kind of goes in and out of favor where you have a gremlin go into your back in your opponent's back lines and use that to watch everything works with the gremlin because they're not going to attack anything but and they're cloaked but you could theoretically do it with a scythe if you had it, put it on hold fire and just stay somewhat attentive to it not sure if that's the plan though considering the fleas essentially do the same thing i think that scythe might just be used for actually you know dealing damage and killing things However, they may not... Oh, early Weaver getting killed, though, and right inside Anarchid's base. Kingstad being extremely aggressive, or rather, right inside the GBC's base. They are playing as a single hive mind team. So yeah, right inside the GBC's base, completely destroying everything inside the back base. The forward base is fine, but one glaive, the amount of value that one glaive managed to get south team, they've got a reasonably good chance here. They unfortunately have lost the information war game. Very, very badly lost the information war game. Their opponents basically know everything about them except what's going on in this one base. But otherwise, they've they're doing okay. My only question is where the heck did that scythe go? Ah, there it is. Right here. Kind of surprised going into Astron's base, honestly. I would have expected it would go instead into Kingstead's base, and it might be doing that as well. I'll be trying to figure out a way out, actually. Nope! It's going for it! So just going for it. They see there's no static defenses. You might as well just go in and kill things. Maybe get rid of the ogre wall. Nope, just go for the Krikikon. Okay, either way, it doesn't really matter. That scythe doing its job. Doing a pretty good job, too. And it is advertising the fact that there's a scythe there. But hey, if they can get inside King's Dad's base and see what's going on, they'll have full information. The North the GBC will know exactly what to do and where to do it and when to do it. And exactly what their opponent's doing as well. So that might just work. Although these fleas can't fight the weaver... The welder rather hang head on the scythe maybe can i'm actually not sure yeah the scythe can it'll be fine actually can it okay the flea help it yes but that's kind of that's kind of close to maybe that's a bad idea i mean okay the fleas did make it work but if there was any support for that welder that scythe would be dead and even as it is now it's got to wait for the while in order to actually be able to do anything again and it's got no escape either that's a suicide mission it's done well gotten a lot of value especially getting rid of the welder that is huge i mean that's going to completely eliminate the ability to expand up front here so most of the front line is something that the south team cannot secure i mean they're trying to put pressure on with the glaives just to make it so that they don't have to worry about it too much but still this area here basically out of their reach the northern Pla the eastern plateau has not been taken though the western plateau yes but yeah king's actually being very aggressive on their expansion however the gbc not really going for it so much I'm actually not sure what their plan is, because at this point, they don't have a whole lot they can work with economically. The South team is winning economically quite effectively. The Scythe isn't doing a great job of actually countering that. And unfortunately, never went into Kingstad's base, so they don't have any knowledge of that base and what's inside it. Same time, though, Kingstad with their own Scythe getting the idea from their opponents. Not a bad idea, either, as it turns out. But, man, I just don't... Astrid and Kingstad, they have a really strong position to work from here. They have twice the economy... They have a f quite so solid base, honestly. They have a quite solid army setup. I mean, the ogres are gonna have a maybe a bit of a hard time going forward. What with the rock, what thrown in there, that does present a complication. However, I don't think that's a huge complication, honestly. Now, yes, Ronin are a bit of a tricky thing to deal with, but no, it's a huge complication. That that ogre cannot get in. 
No surprises there. That's pretty much, you know, skirmishes beat riots as a rule. But, yeah, beyond that, though, South Team is still just way ahead. They're producing more. They're getting more economy. GBC is getting some reclaim to work with, but they never really tried to claim the plateaus. They never claimed much going forward, honestly. They completely nullified their opponent's ability to claim this center for the first for the last couple minutes, but at this point, that doesn't matter. There was no taking of economy on their, of their own to make that actually an advantage. Or to make that a huge advantage, at least. Make that a sizable enough advantage to make it worth the time. And now we finally see it, but I feel like it's too little too late. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised that we saw Anarchy go in the spiders here. I like the way that the last game we saw the spiders being built up in the forward base. That made it a lot easier to take the plateau. But that's not what we're seeing now. We saw spiders built in the back. I understand the logic there, because the spiders can go across the little re little ravines, then they don't have to worry about it. Like, they can be protected on a lot of sides, but they can go across the center. But I I think I agree more with the way that we saw last game, where they were the spiders were being used alongside here. Alongside this little ravine into the plateau. Granted, that's not what we saw here with Kingstead. They just went for it. They just walked into the plateau along the standard ramp, and just took it. And that's totally paid off. At this point, Ronan coming into the base for Astran, but I don't think they're going to worry about it too much. That choke point off the Kodachi! That's it! Those Ronin are done! They have nowhere they can go and actually survive this. Like, the Kodachi shouldn't necessarily win this, but there it goes. I mean, it's not a bad choice. It's just not necessarily what I'd go for here, but... Yeah, it works. I'd, I'd go for a Blitz, personally, but hey, Kodachi still does the job, especially in, especially when it gets all the Ronin caught in a choke point. So at this point, GBC essentially making their last stand. Looks like Kingstad doesn't necessarily want to go for it too quickly. Sending in a few Ronin Glaives just to test the waters. But really, the economy seems to be going in building tanks, building Kodachis, building... Yeah, building anything else besides Kodachis? No, nope, just Kodachis. Pure Raider Force, but that should be enough. Or actually, will it be enough? This base over in the plateau, having now been built up, makes that a slightly... a slightly more complicated affair. I mean, I'm not... not convinced it's still a bad idea, but yeah, it's gonna be tricky. Same time, though, Kingstad's army is actually kind of... kind of large, but definitely in out of position... That Redback able to get way more damage on the Ronin than it had any right to. I'm not sure why they were going forward like that, especially why they were walking forward so much. But they were, and that's given Team GBC a bit of an extra fighting chance. Not one I would have expected, but hey, they're actually going to be able to push back a little bit. Their economy is still way behind. Their army value is still behind. Their attrition is actually not bad. In fact, how is their army value right now? It's... Wow, it's actually ahead. So yeah, all by attrition, the GBC team has a has a better army by cost. I mean, they have less territory, they have less of an economy. They can't produce as much, so it's entirely down to good micro and good positioning. But to me, that's only a matter of time. Like, sooner or later that will fall apart, especially the sides coming in. The sides, yeah, they're good if they're, if they're not being spotted, but the Glaives can beat them otherwise. And I'm really not sure what the plan is with those sides, because they're not going around the back lines, not going to get rid of the metal extractors, not going into the back and taking out the commander. They're just running defense, which isn't a terrible idea, but it's not a great idea. Like I said, glaives do beat them as long as the glaives know where they are. Of course, this one, Kingstad's commander, that wasn't the best move there, but still, Kingstad has the army coming in. They have a phantom coming in pretty soon. They've got a lot of stuff that... They honestly probably don't care. The commander, to an extent, is bait. So, this is what I mean, though. The South team, they have the economy to do stuff like this. They don't need to worry so much about how well they're microing, because they've won the macro game. Kingstat's commander, as bait, worked successfully. Anarchist's commander stuck getting destroyed, or one of the GBC commanders, rather, getting stuck being destroyed. Because, really, not much been done to deal with that. Like, that Kingstad commander, yeah, okay, got stunned, got paralyzed, but... That was fine. As we saw just now, that wasn't a problem. Because, hey, a bunch of army coming in here. Kingstead has a larger army, or Kingstead and Astrid have a stronger economy. They can build a larger army. They can work with that. Even if the commander was lost, it wouldn't have been a huge deal. It would have been a problem, but it wouldn't have been a huge deal. It wouldn't have been a deal breaker. Now that the commander's alive, well, that's it. GBC doesn't have a whole lot left going for them. 
They kind of have the eastern side of the map a little bit, and they have the size in the back line. This, okay, this kind of makes sense. Going in the back line with the size, trying to rip apart one of the expansions, but unfortunately, none of the factors are going to go down. The Glaives will stop them, and not a whole lot of economy was damaged either. A lot of power was damaged, but the south team had so much redundant power that it really didn't matter. Like, this is Trojan Hill, so you can just build wind generators wherever you want, and these wind generators are in such a secure spot, doesn't even matter, and the GBC knows it. They throw in the towel as, well, they... Despite the fact that they had their army value pretty much even most of the time. Again, that was just efficiency on their part. And ultimately, just getting through that production didn't have that chance. The sides were not a bad choice. It's just they were kind of hit late and didn't hit all the right spots. I would have really liked to see the sides be used to scout out Hokumo sorry, scout out Kingstad's base. Because if they threw into Kingstad's base, then they would have been able to just surreptitiously see what was being built, build better counters to that, and know what was being planned. But this area was never really scouted. The Fleas were able to get everywhere else in the map but Kingstad's base. I guess they were trying to go for an early victory, but that's not going to easily happen in a GB2. I mean, okay, 10 minutes is fast, but I mean like a two-minute victory. But anyway, that was that, and I think the next match is actually going to be... Ah, it's going to be Astra and Kingstad versus the winner of the previous match, Hoke, Wesley and 400. So I'm kind of excited to see what happens there, since with Westlane 400, that's... Well, that's what we saw last time. They went for, it's like, Cook Spider kind of thing. They had... Not Cook Spider, Spider... Shields. That's right, that's what they went for. But this is the two... Well, actually, not the two coordinated teams. Hokomoko and Anarchy got knocked down to the lower bracket, so... This is not the two coordinated teams. At all. This is actually the... Well, one of the teams that just sort of was built up because they kind of had to. And that's going to be interesting. I'm curious if that'll work out, because right now... Right now we do have, like I said, Astra and Kingstead, who have done a great job, at least building up their economy, against another team that we saw the last game was very aggressive at building up their economy. I would be surprised if this went... And if this was a, a slow... Sorry, I'd be surprised if this was a slow game, because, like I said, both teams were highly aggressive. But I did see there was a lot more of an aggressive push to economy for Wesley and 400. They, both them and Pyrostasis Raw really went for the economy in the map, whereas the last match, neither of them really did. So I think what's going to happen is that Pyrostasis and Raw, well, actually, not them as much. I think the the way we saw the last game played, the one before last, between Wesley 400 and Pyrostasis Raw, shows me that Wesleyan 400 are going to take most of the map, and Astrid and Kingstad, their main advantage being the economy in that last game, is not going to work in their favor, unless they also step it up. But anyway, it looks like we're going to be taking a short break as we wait for everything to organize. So, stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 